What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have some very exciting news from the Marvel Snap team and I have to cover all of it right now because it's just absolutely crazy. Haven't really covered a whole lot of news from this channel about Marvel Snap, but this 100% deserves to be fully covered and talked about. It's, it's actually crazy. So, a lot of changes are coming. Some are very good, some are very interesting, some are a little bit controversial, but overall I'm very excited about this patch coming up. So they tease the next season which will highlight Silver Surfer as the main character, and they tease some new variants and card arts, but there's a whole lot more than that. And the first thing that they really talk about is collector's tokens. So I will have the link to this article. This is on their official site in the description below if you want to read it for yourself. I'm not going to read it word for word, but I'm going to talk about what these things are. So essentially, they want to have the ability to unlock specific cards. So if you're missing one key card and you really need that to make your deck work, they want you to have the ability to do so. So collector's tokens are actually going to allow you to do exactly that, purchase direct cards. But there's a little bit of a catch. There's going to be something called the token shop. So the token shop essentially is a rotating shop that you unlock access to once you hit collection level 500. So you've got to hit level 500 in your collection level to have this uh, shop in, in, uh, in your game. And when you do, a new card will pop up there every eight hours. So they'll rotate every eight hours, but you'll have the ability to pin the card. So here's an example that they show here. So here's Cerebro. Um, it is saying new card in three hours. So that'll rotate every eight hours, and it'll tell you the, uh, the cost right here on the right of the card. It costs 1,000 collection tokens to unlock this card. And it tells you your total amount of collection tokens at the top right. All very exciting stuff. What will happen is... You'll essentially have the opportunity to unlock this or let it rotate to the next card. If you really want this card and you're 100% set that you want this exact card and it popped up in your shop, you just have to pin it and it will stay indefinitely until you unpin it or until you purchase it. So if you're really, really looking for, say, uh, Wong, because he's absolutely absurd and you really want to put uh, Wong into one of your decks, well, all you have to do is wait for Wong to show up in one of these shops, pin it when he gets there, and you'll get it. That is a very exciting feature that will allow us to, you know, unlock direct cards. You know, Wong is a, as in an example, is in a really important and powerful card. But say you already unlocked Kingpin and you really want Magneto, that's another option as well. So you can clearly just wait for that and pick that exact card that you need. Very exciting stuff. But the question comes to mind, okay, well, how the heck do we get these collection tokens? So how do you get these collection tokens? Good question. So collector's tokens are essentially going to be replaced in... Uh, the collector caches and reserves. So normally when you can, uh, they're replacing boosters, I should say. So normally when you open a collector's cache, you could uh, unlock like 10 boosters for somebody, Hazar or something like that. That's a pretty frustrating experience because you're not really getting a whole lot there. You're just unlocking 10 boosters, which you can get just by playing the game. So they're taking those out and putting these tokens in. So you'll have a 25% chance to drop 100 tokens. But if you finish every series three, or we call them pool three cards, they call them series, um, but most players call them pulls. Same thing. If you have all pull three cards, you'll actually get 400 tokens, which is which is pretty cool. A 22% chance. Uh, you have an additional 22% chance, I should say. So even higher chance, and you'll get additional tokens. So that's pretty exciting. Well, where are they specifying if you have all pull three cards? Doesn't that mean you have a complete collection? Well, they're actually adding two new pulls. So there's going to be pulls... 4 and 5, or Series 4 and 5, and they're actually rare or ultra rare, which is pretty crazy. So essentially, rare is 10 times less likely to be seen or, uh, than pull, uh, Series 3 cards, and Series 5 is 10 times less likely to be seen than Series 4, and then, you know, 100 times less likely than Series uh, 3, which is kind of crazy. So they are extremely rare cards that they have put into the game, but the thing is that... This is a little bit controversial. Uh, now that you're saying there are specific cards that are going to actually be locked to this exact uh, rarity level, which can be a little bit annoying. So say one of these cards is something that is very powerful, overpowerful, or just a really specific synergy that you want. It will be locked. It'll be really harder uh, to find it. Uh, obviously, naturally, you could find them, uh, and I should have included that. I don't know if they actually if this was in the article just yet, but... Essentially, as soon as you get to pool three, you have a chance of unlocking pool four and pool five cards. So it's not like you have to wait to finish pool three. It's actually, they're already in the same unlocking, like you unlock them at the same time, but they're just rarer. 
So they'll also pop up in the shop, but they're just rarer and they cost more collection tokens. So it's a little bit of a feel bad because, okay, some of these cards are kind of ridiculous and what if it's kind of gatekeeped, blah, blah, blah. Well, they say they're actually going to be moving the cards down eventually. So right here, you'll get them eventually. Uh, series five will go to four, four to three, etc. They will rotate these cards out and add new cards to series five throughout. So that's an option, which is, feels pretty good. They don't give specifics about that time-wise, but still exciting. Here is where the uh, token count comes through. So a Series 3 card is just 1,000 tokens. Now when we said we well, only lock uh, 100, 25% chance to unlock 100 uh, collector tokens through a cash, yeah, you got to build up a lot to be able to unlock a Series 3 card. But, I mean, you have to build up even more to unlock a Series 4 or Series 5 card. Very difficult to do. Like I said, they will rotate in the shop randomly as well. So moving on, to get started, this is very important. If you take anything away from this video, take this away from the video, please. You will get a gift as soon as you, as soon as these tokens come out. So if you're between 500 and 99 uh, collection level, you'll get 3,000 tokens. If you're at 1,000 to 3,000, you'll get 6,000 tokens. If you're at 3,000 plus, you will actually get 12,000 tokens just for doing that. So I say... If you are very close to 500, make sure you spend a little bit extra money now, or extra credits, not money, but extra credits now to get to 500 so you can get 3,000 free tokens. Or if you're at 900 like I am, I'm around 950, I'm going to make sure to spend a little bit extra of my credits right now, cash in the gold that I have to make sure I hit 1,000 collection level so I'll get a free 6,000 tokens. Come back up here. 6,000 tokens could be one Series 5 card, a Series 4 card, or si uh, two Series 4 cards, or six Series 3 cards. That's a lot. So take that from this video, please. Look at this chart here. Make sure you're getting the max value here and get these free tokens. They're free right away. If you were watching this video and you were like, well, I'm not even at 500 yet and I'm not going to get to 500. That's okay. That's actually what this uh, sentence right here is saying. As soon as you get to 500, you'll then unlock the token shop and you'll get the 3,000 free tokens, which is great. Very cool, very generous. Uh, I like this a lot. I think it's going to add a really cool uh, new economy aspect to the game that's going to let you unlock specific cards. And I think it's all good news. But we just talked about Series 4 and Series 5. So what's going on? Well, we need to fill those two pools with new cards. And that's exactly what this article does. So let alone Silver Surfer, who's going to come out, who I'll have videos on, I'm sure, as soon as he comes out. We get a bunch of new cards. So I'm going to go through real quick and break some of these down and just kind of read them real quick. Uh, we have She-Hulk. This is the Series 4 card. So starting with Series 4. She-Hulk. 6 energy, 10 attack. Costs 1 less for each unspent energy last turn. So if you don't spend energy on turn 5, you can then play She-Hulk for very cheap on turn 6. Pretty cool, kind of like an infinite type strategy. It'll essentially let you, you know, skip your turn five to get good value on turn six. Pretty fun. We got Titania, who's a one five. Pretty crazy stat line. When any card is played at this location, this card switches sides, so it can be pretty insane. Can really make this card switch back and forth uh, from side to side, which is pretty fun. Luke Cage, he's a two one. Ongoing, your cards can't have their power reduced. That's extremely exciting. Uh, and it's just a two cost, so he'll fit pretty nicely in some ongoing decks that you can buff with Spectrum and things like that. Absorbing Man, 4-3. On Reveal, if the last card you played has an On Reveal ability, this card copies it. Really solid card for On Reveal decks. My current On Reveal deck that I'm loving is kind of missing a 4-drop. I'm using a Flex card. I would love to have Absorbing Man. Be fantastic. Maria Hill, 2-3. On Reveal, add a random 1-cost card to your hand. I think this might be one of the best of Series 4. I think that's absolutely incredible to be able to get a free one-cost card like that. Uh, you know, really fits in really strong with Zoo decks and Kazar decks. Got our boy Phil Coulson. He's a 3-4. On reveal, add a random 4 and 5 cost card to your hand. Really fun card because he's a 3 cost and he gives you a 4 and 5. So essentially just lets you hit a curve regardless of what that curve is going to look like. Pretty consistent card. And we got the Helicarrier who's a 6-10. When you discard this card from your hand, replace it with three random cards. So it really helps discard decks. You essentially just get to fill your hand with fodder, uh, which is nice for discard decks. Mbaku, who is really cool. Well, one, two. If it's in your deck at the end of the game, it leaps to a random location. So essentially, he's kind of like Angel, who uh, comes out of your deck when you destroy a card there. Well, he, if he's stuck in your deck at the end of the game, he'll just leap out of your deck and come to a random location for a surprise plus two power. 
Got Atuma next. If you uh, four ten, if you have another card here at the end of your turn, destroy this. So he wants to be solo. You want to have just this card, kind of like Namor, at this location, and he'll be ten power, just like Namor is. And then we got Orca, who is a six cost, nine power, ongoing plus five power. If this is your only card here, so same exact thing as Namor, just want to be the only card at the location. Up next, we got Series 5. There's less of these, but first up is Galactus, a 6 cost, 3 power. On reveal, this is the only card here. Destroy all other locations. Only has to be your only card. And you'll just destroy the other locations. So this can be a pretty wild card that can just essentially wipe out the entire board in very interesting ways. Not really sure what to think about this card yet. He's pretty insane. We got Valkyrie. Five cost, three energy or three power. On reveal, set all cards at this location to three power. Kind of a, a good neutralizer card who just kind of, if, if their uh, deck's getting out of hand, you can kind of set it back. It's nice. Super Scroll, who's one of my favorite characters from comics. He's a four cost, two power. Ongoing, has the ongoing effects of all enemy cards. I absolutely love that. I think it's super cool. He can steal all the ongoing abilities. Kind of like how Rogue uh, can do things like that, but he can do it as well. Really fun card. Shuri, four drop, two power. On reveal, double the power of the next card you play. Fits super well with Black Panther. You can get some crazy numbers with her. Super fun card. Bast, who's a one cost of one power. On reveal, set the power of all cards in your hand to three. Can be pretty fun with like a, a really rush style deck. You just have a bunch of one cost things. You set them all to three, give them a big boost. Very fun card. I think between this and Agent uh, Maria Hill, I think that's some really good uh, zoo synergy. We got Thanos, the Mad Titan. He's a 6 cost, 8 power. At the start of the game, shuffle the 6 Infinity Stones into your deck. So essentially he makes your deck a lot weirder because you add 6 cards to it. And they're all these different stones that are 1 energy, 1 power for the Mind Stone. On reveal, draw 2 stones from your deck. 1 energy, 3 power. If you've played all 6 stones, Thanos has plus 10 power wherever he is. Reality Stone. Transform this location into a new one. Draw a card. It's kind of like a Scarlet Witch there. The Soul Stone, a 1-1. One, one. Draw a card. Ongoing. Enemy cards here have minus one power. Space Stone. Next turn you can move one card to this location. Draw a card. One card at this location. Draw a card. The Time Stone on reveal. Gain plus one energy next turn and draw a card. So some very interesting cards that all boil down to what Thanos is doing. So that's the video, guys. That's the new news that's coming out, along with Silver Surfer. Like I said, I'll have a video on uh, at some point when I get into that season. Uh, hopefully, you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel. I have plenty more coming. I have about four or five decks I've been working on over the past week that I'll be putting up deck techs and gameplay video breakdowns coming up along this week. So if you guys enjoyed, leave a subscription to the channel, leave a like, drop a comment. Tell me which one of these new cards you're most excited for, and keep on snapping.